what they call direct violence. That is to kill people with intentions. The most typical examples are wars, okay? This is a photo I took outside Grozny in Easter 96. I've been visiting so many war zones in the last 40 years. I know the horrible consequences of wars. And if you look on the statistics of wars, there are more or less 300 killed every day. That's adding up to 100,000 a year killed on the battlefield, okay? There are more in indirect consequences, but on the battlefield we talk about 300 every day, 100,000 a year. Going on in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, Kashmir, and so on and so on. The other concept, structural violence, that is a form of violence where some social structures or social institutions may harm people by preventing them from meeting their basic needs. Typical, the slum areas in the world. And this type of violence is killing 100,000 a day. The same number as wars per year. This is a much more serious problem for humanity. This is 36 million every year. And it is, for me, in my background as a conflict worker, coming to be more and more important to study. Why don't we cope more with these types of early deaths? Of course, there are good reasons to try to stop and prevent wars, but this is a much more horrible development. There are established rules of responsibilities, conventions, and court systems for war crimes. ICC and so on. Not every state wants to implement these rules, but we see that there are at least some tries to have the, the criminals taken to court and punished for what they're doing in wars. But we don't see any system for the perpetrators and implementers of structural violence. That's missing. We know what causes these early deaths. And we know how to prevent it. We can identify several perpetrators. Why is so little done? Why don't we as civil society, state actors, international communities, whatever you want to call it, why don't we act more seriously on these, these problems? We could both talk about acts and acts of omission, what we don't do, but we could have done. In criminal law, an omission or a failure to act will also constitute actus reus, namely guilt, okay? If you don't try to prevent these harms, you are guilty. It's not enough to sit back home and watch your TV on what's going on. If you have the possibility to act, you should do that. Both acts and omissions are problematic, of course. These are not easy issues. If it was easy, we would have coped with them a long time ago. And both include responsibilities on the individual level and organizational level. Who commits acts and acts of omission when it comes to structural violence? I don't have the time to go through all of them, but I would like to give you some examples. The neoliberal economical system implemented on basic needs. Then you need to go to the market to buy water. Then the pharmaceutical industries set the price on medicines for malaria or other easily curable diseases then they are perpetrators. The market is maybe fine for having economical growth, but for the poor people, the losers in the system, it's deadly. I don't care if the market takes care of my stupid toys, but when it comes to food, medicine, water and shelter, it should be guaranteed for everyone and not put on the market. The privatization going on in health and and water, all these basic needs are put on the market, not political control anymore. 
market forces without any morality except profit. Deregulation in every single state around the world. When we let the market forces decide the, on the prices of what we need to fulfill our basic needs, we have these serious problems. There is no lack of food or water or medicine or shelter in the world. There is a lack of just distribution. And we let this happen. We accepted it. And some of us are even arguing in favor of more market economy when it comes to basic needs. It creates unemployment. Everywhere you see privatization going on, more neoliberal economy, you see more unemployment rate. The gap between the people who are benefiting and those who are losing are wider and deeper than ever. You need more than two euros a day to survive. If you don't have that salary level, you will face an early death. 100,000 a day, that's serious figures. Unacceptable, if you ask me. It's killing more than any other human ideology. If you add fascism, communism, whatever, it doesn't add up to the consequences of the neoliberal economy on basic needs. Two typical actors in this ideology. It is IMF and the World Bank. When you are asking for loans, they put demands on your government. Privatization, deregulation, and so on. I know they do something good as well, but they are some of the main actors promoting this ideology with the deadly consequences. These structural adjustment programs, we know how they are functioning. It's well documented. We can't be ignorant anymore. We know what's happening when they're implemented. Growing poverty, growing unemployment, basic needs not fulfilled for the majority of people, more people dying early. And this is just one of the books. There are, and this is back from 1997. Already then, we knew the consequences. Still, these ideas are implemented on a regular base. Not accepted. If you want to have more updated figures, there are a lot of literature out there. We have a number of former crimes in human history that were accepted in these early days, but today seen as unjust. Imperialism, that was part of the ordinary political systems. Today we are very critical to it. Slavery was integrated in the economy going back a few hundred years. Torture, we try to end it, and it's not legal in any country anymore. It's still used, but not on a legal base. Anti-personnel mines are today illegal due to the convention. We could list a number of these examples, what was seen as normal and accepted earlier, but today is seen as bad, unjust, and illegal. Time to discuss structural violence? Yes, I think so. Put them in the same category of former crimes to be ended. What do we do in order to take on this fight? Courts, maybe? Maybe some sort of new international court system for the worst perpetrators of this ideology? Or tribunals organized by civil society, like the Russell Tribunal against the war in Vietnam? Blame and shame, that's a possibility. Or more focus on international convention of economical and social and cultural, uh, and cultural rights. That's almost like a second grade convention compared to the Human Rights Declaration today. So, lifting it up to give it the same status. So if you're violating these economical, social and cultural rights, you're also to be blamed and shamed, like you are today for the, the Human Rights Declaration. There are more possibilities, and this will be put on the table for discussions. 
If you want more relevant data, there is one fabulous new database created in Sweden. We will get almost every country in the world and so many different variables that are relevant for human security and these basic needs included, and political rights. Use that one. It's going to be more public next year. So, thank you for your attention, and I really hope we could have a good discussion on this. If you don't have time here, email me. You can't send me anything that I won't smile back to you. I mean, I, you can't um, uh, humiliate me or be too tough on me. I want a tough discussion on these topics. I know it's quite a controversial, some of it, but please let us start a discussion. I would be happy to join you doing that. Thank you.